Today, it's a digital portrait painting. This is Topaz Studio 2, my creative toolbox, episode number 48. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. Today, we're going to be making this digital portrait painting using Topaz Studio 2. We'll also be working with Photoshop as well. I'll do some a uh, little bit of cleanup in Photoshop at the end once I, I'm done in Topaz Studio 2. So stick with me the whole way through because you're not going to want to miss the ending part of this tutorial. By the way, if you don't yet own Topaz Studio 2, you can still get it and I will link it in the description below this video. And you can also use my promo code David Kelly and receive an additional 15% off the price of Topaz Studio 2. So just in case you're wondering, can I still get it? Yes, you can. By the way, if you look in the description below this video, you're going to find a download link that you can download this image and follow along with me. And also, I went ahead and duplicated the background layer and called it Topaz Studio 2 because we don't want to work on the actual background layer. We want to have a new layer. And let's just come up here to Filter and we'll launch Topaz Studio 2 and get started. I've had some viewers asked in the past, can you do portraits with uh, Topaz Studio 2, the impression filter, the painterly filter? And I'm gonna answer that question today. And the answer really is yes, and you're gonna see here in a second. We're gonna start out by coming up to add filter, and we're gonna find the impression filter under stylistic right here. And this is the painterly filter inside of Topaz Studio 2, and I love this filter. You can get some really great results with it. And already, just by clicking on the impression filter, it looks pretty good. Here's the before and here's the after, but we're not done here. We're gonna work in this a little bit. The first thing I wanna do, and this is something that I do a lot, is come down to the bottom of the filter where it says texture. Let's open up texture and let's come to the very bottom. See where it says background type, solid and original. Can you see some of these little white flecks in here? This is the canvas behind here. And Topaz Studio 2, the impression filter, gives you a really realistic painting effect. And you can change this background color, the canvas itself, to different colors if you want to. Like if I come here and make it more like a sepia type background, you can see that color changes from white to sepia. If I change it to blue, can you see the blue flecks in there? So that's really cool. But a lot of times I like to start out by just clicking on original. And if you click on original, it just fills in the gaps, which is nice. I'm going to X out of here. So that's how I'm going to start by filling in the gaps of the canvas. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in so we can really see what these paint strokes look like. Okay. And if you left click and hold down with your mouse, you can see the before and the after. So already the strokes look really cool. But usually what I like to do is start out with these different paint types. Okay, this is type 01. Now I have found one that I really like, but let me just click through some of these and you can see the different uh, effects we get by altering the uh, paint types, the paint brush types, I should say. And I like to experiment by going through these and uh, seeing what kind of effect we can get. This is more of a sketchy effect, which is kind of cool sometimes. And I use that from time to time. But we're going to go down through here. Here's type 10. Here's type 11. Here's type 12. And actually, I ended up using type 12. I thought type 12 was really pretty. Let me zoom back out. As you can see, it's really beautiful. But we got a few other things that we have to do here. The next thing I like to do is come to the um, number of strokes. And you have choices here. You can do a low number of strokes you're gonna get a more abstract look, and that's really pretty. Medium, a little more defined look, and high will be really defined. Okay, so whichever one you like. Now, do you have to use the one I'm using? <laughs> well, you know the answer to that, no. You can use the one that you like. I actually like high, but I ended up, uh, I think, using low. So I'm just gonna go with my original plan here and go back to low, but I do like high too, so choose the one that you like the best. You see a little bit more of a painterly effect in the low. But what if I compromised and went to medium? You know what? I think I'm going to go to medium. I think it's a good compromise. And I think I like it better. After I pick a stroke, I like to then play with the brush size. Now, if I take this brush size and move it to the right, the brush strokes get larger, okay? So it's like I'm using a bigger brush and I can make it look really ugly, which is not what I want to do. In my case, I think I want to make it a little bit less than 50. It defaults at 50, just a little less. I think I'm going to go around like a 47. I like that. Here's the before and here's the after. 
Now let's look at the paint opacity. This is one of my favorite sliders, paint opacity. This makes the painting effect show up a lot more. Let me zoom in so you can really see it here. Okay, so let's focus in on this area of her face. So let me go ahead and take the paint opacity and let's pull it up. See what that does? You can really see those strokes start to come up. More like a Van Gogh type style right there. So depending what you like, you can adjust this accordingly. I'm not going to go too strong here, but I think I want to be, I don't know. It, it defaults at 50. I think I want to be around 56. Okay, so here's the before and here's the after. So I think I like that. And is there anything else I want to do in here? Now, we could go around and we could play with, um, I like to play with um, stroke rotation. This just shows you, uh, this will just change the way the strokes are rotating. So let, let me just adjust this so you can see it. See, can you see them rotating? A lot of times I just leave it right where it is at the default setting of zero. And then you can add some extra stroke color variation here. If you start to pull this up, can you see the color variation start to come in there? So... In this particular image, I don't want any of that. Now, we can play with the stroke length and the stroke width, but I think I'm happy. If I adjust the stroke width, the strokes become wider. Can you see that? If I draw, adjust it to the left, they become more narrow. So I like it right in the uh, center. So if you double-click on this, or actually, you have to double-click on the name stroke width, and it'll reset it back. Next is stroke length. If you move it to the right, you'll make the strokes longer. If you move it to the left of center, you'll make the strokes shorter. But I think I like it right where it was. So again, here is the before, and here's after. And I think I like everything just the way it is at this point. But we're not done. Next, I want to add one of my very favorite filters in Topaz Studio 2 to this image. And let's come up here to Add Filter. And that is the Precision Contrast. Now, I like to use the Precision Contrast along with the Impression Filter. It really works well with it, as well as the Precision Detail. Today, I'm only going to work with the Precision Contrast because this image is a delicate, nice, soft image. And I don't want to pop a lot of detail out, but I just want to bring some nice contrast out. So let's click on Precision Contrast. But what I like about this filter is it breaks contrast down into micro, very small areas of contrast. Think sharpening effects. Low areas of contrast, medium and high. But watch how I can really sculpt and bring out some lighting in this image. First off, I'll do micro. I'll pull it up a little bit and uh, I think I'm going to go up to around like a 25 just to pop a little bit of detail. Can you see that? And then I'm going to go with low. Let's pull up some low. And low is going to be right around here. But can you see that nice uh, shadow area is starting to pop out in here? It's bringing that contrast up in those shadow areas. Now let's go to medium areas of contrast and let's pull this up a little bit. Oh yeah, isn't that beautiful? And I think I'm going to go right around 25, 26. And now these are higher areas of contrast. And if I go too crazy here, I can make that hair look really ugly, right? Actually, it's not that bad. It looks kind of interesting. It has an artistic twist to it. So you may like that look. I shouldn't say it looks ugly. It, it's not bad, actually. But it's probably a little overdone for me. So what I want to do here is come down to about a, I'm thinking like around a 25 as well. But let's take a look. And if we click this eye, here's the before and here's the after. But see how that little bit of, uh, precision contrast really sculpts this image and makes it really look nice. I think I'm done here in Topaz Studio 2, but I want to open up the precision contrast real quick. I just want to let you know too, we also have some lighting adjustments, like we can adjust shadows, midtones, and highlights, and we can adjust the equalization of this image. Like I'm going to click it on low. Can you see the little difference there? Here's medium. It's dealing with the lighting and high. And in this case, I think medium looks good. There's also some color adjustments in here, saturation, vibrance, and color contrast. But I'm not going to mess with those today. And I think I'm done at this point, at least done inside of Topaz Studio 2. I want to zoom in and show you something here. What I want to do, though, and I'm going to show you what I want to fix in Photoshop. You see the lips here. Some of the lip color is extended out over the lip here. And I'm going to correct that in Photoshop. And I'm going to show you how I can take care of that. And then also, there's a little mess up right here. I'm going to fix that in Photoshop as well with the spot healing tool. There's healing in here, but I don't like it as much as Photoshop, I'll be honest with you. So I'm going to use Photoshop spot healing tool for that. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and click accept and it'll send us right back into Photoshop. Here's before the impression painterly effect. 
and here is after. I really think this came out really nice, but let me zoom in here and show you how I fix this uh, area on the lips here. Let me zoom way in. What I'm going to do is get a blank pixel layer and put a blank pixel layer above this layer. I'm going to change it to the color blend mode, okay? To the color blend mode. Now, what I want to do is sample. Let me make sure I get a brush tool, B for the brush tool. And I have my opacity at 100% and my flow at 5%. So I can build this up slowly. I'm going to sample this color right here. And I'm going to just build this up slowly. I'm going to just paint that color on here and it'll get rid of that uh, lip color. You see that, how I'm getting rid of that? Just like that. Now I can come over here and sample some of this color in here and paint this over this area. But just like that, I can get rid of that. Okay, so let's take a look. Here is the before, and here is the after. So that was an easy fix. Now let's get a new blank pixel layer, and I'm going to use my spot healing tool, and the shortcut for that is J. Now, make sure you have sample all layers checked on here, and I'm just going to fix this little area by painting right over here. See how that fixes it right up? And down here, there's some discoloration here, so let's go back to this layer one. And it's still in the color mode. I'm going to get my regular paintbrush, B for brush. And I'm going to sample this color right in here. And let's just paint that over here. And just fix that up. And even over here, I'll sample this color and paint right here. So I'll just take care of those little issues right like so. Now here is the before. And here is the after. So just like that. Now let me zoom back out. And that looks good. But you know what? I'm seeing a little discoloration down here. I'm going to fix that. Let me go ahead and get a... We'll go back in this layer one. I'm going to get my brush tool, B for the brush tool. I'm still at 100% opacity and uh, 5%. I'm going to option or all click right in this area. And let's just paint this color in here. It's a little bit discolored. So I'm going to just fix it right on up. Maybe I'll grab this color and blend a little bit of this color in here as well. Right there. And maybe over here, I'll just blend a little bit of that color in there. And right here, there's a little discoloration right there. Okay, so here's the before. So look down in this area. Here's the before and here's the after. But that uh, color blend mode will really help you out on these painterly type images if you get a little bit of discoloration somewhere. Well, there it is, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe. Click that bell notification icon. Then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. And I'll see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.